sketchbook tour. That's what I'm doing today. I'm doing a sketchbook tour, kind of a mini sketchbook tour. I'm gonna tour prompts that I drew in my sketchbook for April Fay, which was a drawing challenge put on by two really awesome artists that I greatly admire from Sweden. Um, that is Lisa Law Erikson and Naomi Nowick. And you know, I might have mispronounced those things, sadly. Um, but I first discovered Joanna, Joanna Aust from Sweden um, when I was, God, back in the day when I was a teeny bopper and I was on DeviantArt. <laughs> Remember the DeviantArt? Um, and I absolutely fell in love with her art and um, through her I discovered these other artists like Lisa Lott and Naomi. Um, and there's just such a really cool collection of artists over there. Um, and uh, I know Joanna has recently moved out of Sweden, but you know, anyway, it's just, that's just kind of, she was the gateway drug, essentially. And um, anywho, I was super stoked when I noticed that Lisa Lott was doing a drawing challenge. I've done drawing challenges in the past, um, like Trolloween and Mermaid and all of this stuff, and they're essentially just prompt lists that somebody comes together and creates and releases and then anybody's welcome to um, draw as much or as little um, each day for each prompt um, and there's usually a theme and so this theme was fairies and I've been obsessed with fairies since I was a little girl. Um, you know I, I grew up in Venice Beach, California. It was a very eclectic kind of bohemian uh, beatnik kind of lifestyle and um, I was allowed to choose my own spirituality as a kid and I was drawn I was drawn to Norse and Celtic mythology and also just you know fairy folklore and um, Wicca and earth magic um, and the first book that was ever gifted to me about fairies was a beautiful Brian Froud book. In fact I have it right here. This is my grandma. She was in the WAC Women's Army Corps. Um, this precious book by Brian Froud. This became almost like my Bible as a kid growing up and um, really just formulated a lot of my brain and the way I work and think and do and see the world was kind of planted through Brian Froud and his um, musings on the world of fairy. Um, so yes, so fairies are very near and dear to my heart. Um, I have quite a collection now too of other Brian Froud books about fairy. Um, I think this one's my favorite, um, Good Fairies, Bad Fairies. Uh, and what was cool is I got to you know, pull them out again and really kind of explore um, to get ideas for each prompt. Um, so that was really fun. That was really fun getting to um, have an excuse to pull these books out on a daily basis for the entire month and just kind of drool and wonder and be inspired. And the drawings that resulted and the pages that are of April Fay in my sketchbook are very earthy and I actually, I really appreciate it. I think like this the prompt list that Lisa Lott and Naomi put together was very earthy and um, also celestial, but um, it definitely, I felt like it brought my art down to earth more. I think I've been, um, my creatures have been pretty extraordinary, extraordinary, perhaps interdimensional, um, alien, fairy, mutant things, and you know, that is kind of my direction and whatever, what have you, but it was also nice to just kind of sink back into earth and be inspired by earth energies and earth spirits and sprites and pixies and fairies and things. Um, so uh, I really, really appreciated it. And I wanted to share my weird creatures with you, my, my little fairies that I drew th with all of the prompts. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just open up my sketchbook and tell you about all the sketches. So, you know, there was however many days of 
April, what, 30, 31, something of that nature, whatever. Um, and I didn't do all of them, no, I didn't. Um, I think I did around 18 sketches, so I'm gonna be showing you um, around that number of sketches in my sketchbook today. Um, and I will let you know what the prompts are and such. Um, so I know usually when I do post a sketchbook tour, people kind of are curious about my materials, so I thought I would go over my materials. Let's open up my little pouch. Um, mechanical pencils to sketch in. Um, I really do enjoy the uh, these little eraser pen refillable things. Um, so I use those. And my favorite pens to draw with are Favor Castell India Ink uh, Pit Artist Pens is what they're called. Um, this is the most, I just went to the art store and got some more. This is the packaging uh, that they are currently in. But yeah, Favor Castell India Ink. Um, and so that's what I'm drawing with. And then this is my sketchbook. Um, this is actually a custom made hand tooled leather sketchbook cover made by my godbrother, Wonder Randy Tooth. Um, and his uh, crafts are awesome. I really recommend checking him out. Um, but I, I use that to house my moleskin sketchbooks. I like moleskin sketchbooks. Um, they, they're really sturdy and they have a nice thick paper weight and I like the cream of the color of the, the paper. Um, so that is what I'm using to sketch in. All right, so with that done, let's dive into the sketchbook, shall we? Okay, so this is Jenny Green Teeth. I don't know if you're familiar with her, her fairy lore, but uh, she hangs out in freshwater, uh, kind of murky ponds and the like, and she abducts small children um, and gives them a nice watery grave. Uh, a lot of my, my creatures are usually beautiful. So I, I, um, it's, it's hard to augment my characters to, a, to such a degree since I am very um, recognizable. I do a very similar face. I have a certain structure uh, that is my aesthetic and my style. Um, so it was fun kind of adapting that for this prompt, for this kind of um, gnarly little fairy maiden who um, is not so sweet, not so beautiful, but then has her own grace in her own really creepy way. So uh, I did a different nose. Um, <laughs> the teeth are really funny to me, but um, I had a fun with this prompt. You know, I have her hair is kind of um, patchy. There's lots of bald spots and um, the hair that is there is actually kind of aquatic plants that are growing up and kind of camouflaging herself in the water. Um, and yeah, her little underwater uh, aquatic garden. Uh, this was for the prompt the fool. Um, and uh, as you, I'm sure if you're aware of my art, I don't often paint or draw men. Um, and I have become better um, in, pre in, you know, in these last few years in incorporating some masculinity, um, some masculine characters in my drawings. Um, so this is one of them. Um, I tend to make my men either skeletons or clowns. <laughs> Read into that as you may, but um, it's just aesthetically interesting to me. And um, I do have a few choice uh, models, men that I, I like to draw. And one of them is Brillo the Clown. Um, he's a clown in New Orleans that I follow on Instagram. And he always has very interesting patterns and um, outfits. And I think he's adorable. And he has some really beautiful, interesting face tattoos. And his cheekbones are wonderful. He's just a really interesting person to um, draw for me. Um, you know, for men, I, I tend to need, need a model that's a little bit more flamboyant. Um, in characteristics and in um, for me to really be interested in drawing. So um, that's what this one was kind of inspired by. It's not him necessarily. This is actually the fool, um, the tarot card, the fool. 
Uh, now, and to fairy him up, I, I put some wings on them, on him. I meant them to be, to look kind of costumey and cheap, um, kind of just like maybe a found, found wings, like kind of like the kid's costume type of wings. Uh, this was for the prompt Titania, I think is how you pronounce it, but uh, she was a fairy queen in uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, I believe, um, and then she just kind of became kind of the one of the iconic fairy queens that people um, imagine. So um, she's my play at fairy queen. I liked putting really big kind of elfin ears with moon trinkets stripping off and kind of a rustic um, sliver moon crown branch, tree branch sort of crown. Um, and the and her wings here are very much inspired by some of Brian Froud's wings, which are um, sometimes striped and have these really interesting kind of long elliptical little fingers to them. And I did kind of a medieval really long braid with, with um, ribbon and things. And uh, I felt like she needed to be walking through kind of a magical field, so I put my trademark kind of sentient eyeball rose garden in there. But I really like this one. This one might be one of my favorites, I think, from from the April Fay drawings that I did. Although this one seemed to be the one that garnered the most interest online and um, people really seemed to adore. Uh, this was the moon prompt. So I just have a very wide-hipped, curvy fairy hanging out with the moon. Um, and as you can see, she's um, all natural down there, kind of fluffy, and um, I had fun making her uh, tights and little stitches here and there. But the wings were the funnest to kind of design with these eyeballs, kind of inspired by some of the moths that have um, faux eyes on their wings. Um, so yeah, that was trying to give her kind of a moth night fairy vibe. This was for the godmother prompt. And so I was attempting here to age my 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 creature lady um a bit more so i can so you can feel the matronness of 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 the of this fairy um and uh so you'll see kind of there's like some sunken um kind of droopy jowls a bit more um the face is rounder um and softer and uh I made her thicker and I had her, you know, her bo boobs are, are more descended. Um, and so I wanted her to be powerful and beautiful and captivating, but also show a bit of age and matronly power. Um, and then I used some of the patterning that I like to do when I body paint people as well on her. And I think it kind of ended up in, in turning into almost some body armor as well and I put some fish scales in there, a little pentagram, some interesting little berry twigs kind of horns. Yeah, that was my godmother prompt. So this was started off of the prompt, her eyes were wild and um, that's actually a John Keats poem uh, that I think is I mean, I've, I've read it a few times. I believe it's about a man who comes across a fairy maiden during a walk and falls helplessly in love with her. Um, but I just kind of took it quite a different direction as I'm sure you see. Um, I have these eyes that are complete, that are seeing in all directions essentially is what I'm trying to show is, um, and um, you know, these, this weird eye, eyeball shadow body. Um, and you can see there's a patch of woods that is the top of her head and she's got different types of ferns and things for hair. So this is just kind of a night goddess or a night fairy. Um, she who watches. She, it is, I tried to draw the feeling that I get sometimes when I'm in deep, when I'm in deep woods and it becomes dusk and the light's falling and I feel like, I'm being watched and that feeling doesn't go away even when I get back to the cabin or wherever I'm staying. Like I can feel this presence out there in the woods. Um, and it's not necessarily an, a, a, a negative presence, but it is just something. It is a presence of otherness um, that I become aware of uh, sometimes. And so that was kind of what I, I did here, um, based on the top, the prompt, her eyes were wild. <laughs> 
So this was Lady of the Lake. I initially drew this concept and I didn't ink it. And I'm not, I don't know, I might ink it later if I can fix the sword and the perspective. <laughs> it's a little wonky. Um, but this is what I ended up doing for Lady of the Lake. Um, I really enjoy paintings and drawings where you can see underwater and above water. So I, I had fun kind of doing that. She's wearing some sort of interesting um, scale chainmail sort of thing and a uh, skirt that's kind of billowing in the water. You can see some fish kind of circling around her. And she's got the sword because she's a watery tart who distributes swords and makes people kings. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that's a Bonty Python reference if you're um, if you're game and then I don't know I had fun drawing kind of some backgrounds castles are fun and I put a big eyeball in the sky instead of a moon or a sun because why not super surreal and whimsy right meet my oak king that was the prompt oak king he is the king of the summer woods and um, I was very excited again to be pushed out of my comfort zone to draw a more a, a, a masculine presence and I had an absolute blast uh, with this and I found a wonderful reference photo by Hair Designs um, and I, it's more like hair as an heir to the throne is the way it's pronounced if you find him on Instagram. Um, and uh, I just loved his pose and he had this really wild lock hairstyle that he had done up into these giant horns. Um, absolutely beautiful and brilliant and so I was instantly inspired and I drew this and you know I tried to incorporate some kind of wood texture in, in, in the face and in the body of the Oak King um, to give him the feeling that he is of wood, he is of the woods. And then I have some oak leaves that are in here and then some just kind of imaginative uh, different ferns and plants and bits and baubles. This was for Shapeshifter, that's right. Um, and what was kind of interesting is I drew this as a sketch for the godmother prompt but then i didn't end up inking it until the shapeshifter prompt i was like oh this will work fine i inked it i posted it online and um you know she's some sort of kind of grandmotherly harpy um half bird half woman fairy sort and uh what was fascinating is naomi had drawn something very similar so we were having fun um kind of pointing that out to each other and feeling like we were kind of channeling something there. So it was kind of a really cool moment um, in the challenge and I really thought that was neat, guys. So yeah, that's um, Shapeshifter. And here is the Holly King, the antithesis of the Oak King that I was explaining. Um, so, uh, you know, he's darker, he's winter, he, um, you know, fall and winter. And so I have mushrooms and holly leaves and berries and bare branches and um, kind of a, like a skeleton face um, as I do tend to with, some, with a lot of the men I do draw. So there he is. So this was Mab, who's another sort of fairy queen and um, I drew her without reference or really um, getting to look at my fairy books that day. It was kind of a rushed um, weekend with lots of things I was doing so she just she just kind of popped in my head this way um, I'm not really sure if I would generally represent Mab in this way but I don't know it was an interesting um, incarnation I suppose and I happened to just make her hugging a kelpie which is a very beautiful majestic sort of water fairy that is the shape of a horse um, so that is that but yeah there's all sorts of weird things up here in kind of a makeshift crown there's a skull and a and a spider and lots of eyeball flowers and um, <laughs> I like these little uh, earrings that I put um, in her long elfin ears and I kind of did my uh, some more patterning my woad patterning that I tend to do on my when I do body painting on her face and she's got puff sleeves <laughs> like so uh, you know kind of interesting some some Celtic inspired jewelry quite a mishmash um, that was for Mab. 
And this one was an interesting prompt called um, The Ones Underground. So I kind of imagined, gosh, I say kind of a lot, don't I? I was imagining how I feel when I'm walking around um, during a Shinrin Yoku or a forest bath or just a hike. And, you know, I see these beautiful trees and mushrooms and ferns and I tend to feel like their root structures are connected to something bigger, a, a, a consciousness. Um, so all of these different elements, the tree, the mushroom, the fern, end up connecting underground to this maiden, this kind of fairy maiden who sleeps. And um, I had fun doing like different layers of, of, uh, of ground substrates and stuff. So you've got like some rocks and then it gets into different layers of gravel and soil. And here's a little skull there, little human remains. Um, so yeah, that was for the prompt, the ones underground. This one was fairy fruit, and um, so I imagined kind of a, um, a pesky garden fairy who might steal your first ripe strawberry of the year from your garden and be very pleased with herself as she did it. And um, I imagine she's out there at night, really, <laughs> going around in your garden picking your cherry tomatoes and your strawberries and all the things that you're excited about picking you know, just as soon as they're perfectly right before you can get to them. And um, her shell bra was, her, her bra was supposed to actually be kind of inspired by snail shells. So I was really kind of trying to give a gardeny, earthy vibe to her. Um, but yeah, I think it's funny. She seems very pleased with her, with herself and her strawberry. So it was fairy fruit. This one was spellbound. So kind of think back to when I was a kid and I um, had some experiences and felt that I had been visited. <laughs> Sorry, wow, you guys have no idea just how bizarre I am, do you? Um, and so this is just the feeling of captivation and um, just being completely spellbound and awestruck by the encountering of the unknown and it being absolutely astoundingly beautiful and unknowable. <laughs> so that's what I was trying to capture here and that was for the prompt Spellbound. So I have like this silhouetted um, vaporous kind of shadowed fae um, that is obviously reaching out and communicating with this young girl and I put her in a corset and such. Um, this was for a mermaid's call was the prompt. So I have my mermaid and she's got hold of an anchor which means there's a ship above and so she's singing her song her her deadly alluring mermaid song up to the people on the ship so um, we'll see if she uh, gets whatever response she's hoping for I suppose um, but my favorite part was designing a different kind of hair for this fairy I kind of was trying to Kind of again, I was trying for a sort of shell inspired afro almost. So, and then I also liked to put in different type of coral and um, sea plants kind of sprouting out of her head. Um, here's some kind of anemones, similar to a lot of the stuff that I put down here on kind of on, on like a reef. And so there's like a starfish and some seaweed, and some fish in the background but yeah she's uh singing singing her blues singing the call of her mermaidy self with you can see some of the bubbles coming up um her voice escaping up there this was the prompt called the merry night wanderer so um again just thinking about some of my experiences when i was younger and the feeling of God, I'm sorry you guys, you guys are like, oh my god, she's crazy. The feeling of being able to sense things that are bigger than you out there, moving around at night. Um, again, not in a malicing way, but just big, 
unknowable, beautiful, majestic kind of things walking around, um, spirit walkers um, or night fairies or something. Um, and I just always felt, again, like like the feeling of 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 also being aware that I was there. So here is this merry night wanderer kind of happening upon this cute little thatched cottage um, and looking in on the inhabitants with a sweet little smile and curiosity. But yeah, I had fun just doing this little environment here with a little dock with a boat and some steps up to this thatched house. First time I did like a thatched roof cottage and um, that was fun. This one was the prompt fairy ring and you know fairy ring is a pretty iconic fairy lore that a lot of people know even if they're not really obsessed with fairy but you know a lot of people know that if you step into a ring of mushrooms um, as you can find in lawns or in the forest um, you have the potential of being stolen away by the fairy never to be seen or heard from again so um, that was actually a very alluring proposition to me as a kid and still now. So anytime I see a fairy ring, I do hop into it and strike a pose ready for transport. So this was kind of my interpretation of that. Um, so I feel like this, this um, being is offering herself to the fairy. So I have the, this kind of portal um, that is within the fairy ring that is kind of absorbing her and um, there's lots of energy and you can see her pigtails are flying and uh, she's in the woods there's some woods background fun doing lots of different mushroom shapes and stuff too and as always I just love drawing butts and um, eyeball spines you know and then this one was shadow so I did a Victorian kind of a Victorian inspired creature lady holding a candle and then her shadow you see reveals potentially her true form um, because you can see she actually has wings even though you can't see it on her person you can see it on her shadow that she is a winged being so that was my prompt for shadow and that's it that's all I got that's all I got for April Fay. So I hope you enjoyed that. I have this much left, um, this much paper left until I finish with this sketchbook and then I will do a full sketchbook tour of all of the things that are in here. So um, shouldn't be too much longer, especially if I start participating in Mermaid. Yeah, I hope that was fun for you and that you're potentially inspired or um, Perhaps you were interested in collecting some of those illustrations. I have started putting some of them um, available as prints in my Etsy shop. Um, so that's lucidopticlab.etsy.com. And um, I'm especially uh, excited about the Moon Goddess prompt. I do have that available as a pen and ink and as a tea stain. And I do intend on putting quite a few of these a few more of these illustrations available as 5x7 pen and inks or as uh, larger um, tea stainings. So um, keep an eye out and also feel free to send me a direct message if you're interested in something that you saw that I don't quite have in my shop yet. I can whip something up for you. Um, again, that's lucidopticlab.etsy.com. You can also check out my website, which is Chelsea Rose Arts. And also want you to follow and support Lisa Lott and Naomi. They're phenomenal artists and they deserve your support and patronage. Um, so I'm gonna drop their links below. So I hope you go and um, check them out and see what they drew for April Fay and um, you know consider maybe uh, supporting them and following them because they're definitely some of my favorite artists. Um, and they were really sweet also. I really appreciate it, you know, they um, regularly liked and commented on my prompts and um, it was just cool. It was a cool sense of com com camaraderie and um, yeah, that's why I love these drawing challenges, you know? Not only do you get to interact with some of your favorite artists 
and maybe build a rapport, but you also create connections. You find other artists that are working under the same hashtags and all the prompts. And so it's kind of a, it's like a sudden like community. It's, it's, and um, those are awesome, always. The more art community you can find, the better as an artist. Um, all the different support networks, all of the ways for uh, connect, new connections to be made, that's really important. It is now May, which is Mermaid, um, and I know you guys are probably like, well Chelsea, why aren't you doing Mermaid? You love mermaids. I know, but I pay, I draw so many mermaids as it is. Do I, should I really do Mermaid? Yes, yes I should. Well, I'm gonna do a few. Um, I'm gonna do a few prompts, and um, I already did one. I can show that to you. Um, This one right here, this is my first mermaid prompt. Um, it's snotty, so she's um, pretty self-absorbed and um, nonchalantly licking the skull of some small human, I believe, on a stick of some variety. Uh, <laughs> um, so yes, uh, check out my Instagram, Lucid Rose. I'll be posting some um, other mermaid prompts as I go throughout the month. I also have an exciting thing to report. I was very, very bad and very, very naughty and I used a little bit of my tax return to purchase a swimmable mermaid tail. I am like beside myself with excitement and um, when I get it, I hope in like another week or two, I will do an unboxing video and then I will do a swimming video and there will be so many pictures of me in this freaking mermaid tail, you're gonna be sick to your stomach probably and I apologize. Beyond that, um, other things, and any other thing I could tell you about? Oh, I'm, I'm working on a new big painting, another big four foot by four foot painting on birchwood panel. Um, it's all actually gonna be like a diptych continuation from the other one that I just recently did called The Watchers, which is available as a print in my Etsy shop. Um, so I'm excited about that. And I'm also working towards doing a new selection of ceramics. Uh, and um, there's a tea festival coming up uh, in late summer that I'm gonna be um, starting to build my inventory up, my merch inventory up for. So um, quite a busy time. I'm looking forward to potentially doing some more murals this summer. I just finished a mural um, a couple weekends ago and um, as always it just makes me hungry for more opportunities. More walls. More walls! So those are the things that are on my mind. Um, fairies, mermaids, murals, um, painting, tea, not much has changed. <laughs> I don't think anything will change. Um, drastically in that regard. But anywho, um, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment. Um, I also really appreciate it when people share my information with other people that they know that are art appreciators. Um, that's great, word of mouth is awesome. Um, any support you can show me and Lisa Law and Naomi is much appreciated, whether that's just following us and liking our stuff or um, becoming a collector. And I know that Lisa Lot and Naomi are on Patreon. So um, yes, I'm gonna put their links below. Thank you so much for watching. Much love. Toodles.